Welcome History Heroes. This morning we're going to cover Roman Contributions Unit 6 Lesson 1 in the history. In history, after you finish this lesson with me, you should be able to go in and complete those assessments. We're going to learn about ancient Roman contributions to our world and compare the present day to community to things that we have from the past. All right, things I want you to think about. What are some of the words that were first used by Romans? How was our calendar influenced by the Romans? How many of the planets are named after Roman gods? What other customs and objects were created by the Romans? First thing I want to talk about is words. Take a look at some of these words. You might want to pause the recording and match a few of them. If you take a look at this, you may have these words. This word is frigidarium, familia, floris, peninsula, publica, anima, aqua, and campus. And these words are the words that we use today that we got from these original words that were Roman. Aquarium, flower, island, republic, family, camp, refrigerator, and animal. If you're watching the recording, pause for a second and see which ones you can match up. There are, they're pretty easy to find if you look at the way the re words are written. All right, another contribution that those Romans did is they contributed to our planets. They named the planets, and they named all but one planet, which was the Earth. They forgot to name the Earth. All of the other planets were named by the Romans. They forgot to name the Earth because they were on it, and they didn't think about it. We live on the Earth, so we didn't think about naming our own planet. But Mercury was named after the Roman god of traveling because it was the fastest planet to orbit around the sun. Venus was named after the Roman goddess of love and beauty because it was the brightest planet in the night sky. Mars got its name from the Roman god of war because its reddish color reminded the Romans of blood. Jupiter was named after the leader of all the gods because it was the largest planet. Saturn was named after the god of agriculture which because according to the myth, Saturn was helpful with farming. Agriculture means farming. Uranus was named after the god of the sky. Uranus was the father of Saturn and the grandfather of Jupiter. Remember those Romans had lots of gods. Neptune was named after the Roman god of the sea because it was bluish in color. Remember, the only planet that was not named by the Romans was our own earth. But the, na the word but the name of the earth is over a thousand years old as well. So all of it is older than you and even me. All right, look at Roman agriculture. Look at, uh, what do you see? Do you see some similarities between these buildings? Do they look a little bit like each other? This one is our national capital. It is the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. Looks a whole lot like this one, which is the Parthenon. So look, take a look at that. They're very similar. This one looks very similar to this one. And then this one, remember this is where the Romans entertain themselves and we know this time of year this is where lots of folks entertain themselves. That is a football stadium. If you were in Baton Rouge, you've seen some big ones and there are some other big ones all over the state of Louisiana because we love our football in the South. That was a Roman influence. All right, another Roman influence is the saying on a nickel. If you see right here, I put the star beside it, it says a pluribus unum. And a pluribus unum means out of many, one. And what that means is out of many, one means out of many states, we have 50 states in our great nation, comes one country. And that is a Roman saying that the, our founding fathers loved so much that they decided they needed to put on a coin. It was that important. And they chose to put it on the nickel. Now, if you look right here at this building, this is another Roman influence in architecture. And architecture means the way buildings are built. This was the home of Thomas Jefferson. And Thomas Jefferson was one of our presidents. He was our third president, and he loved the Roman architecture. He thought it was just the best thing ever. He also had a contest to design the White House, and we got this tradition of having leaders on money from the Romans. He had a contest to design the White House, and even, the, again, that influence right back on that other slide, remember I just showed you, was actually a Roman influence, and he loved that Roman architecture. Obviously, he did because this was his home, and it looked like a Roman architecture, too. Wish my house looked like Roman architecture. It doesn't. 
All right, we're going to talk about the Romans also affected our calendar, and a calendar is the way we keep track of what's going on in our world. Miss Gina has a Google calendar. It's on the computer, and I put everything on it to keep up with my family. Now, there are two months named after Roman rulers. Take a look and look at the names of the month and see if you can think of any that were named by Roman rulers. Hmm. I'll give you a hint. July. Can you think of a Roman leader that was named, sounds like July? Bingo! Ding, 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 ding! Julius Caesar! Way to go! And here right below July is August. Do you remember someone that was named that sounds like August? Augustus Caesar! Very good! Now, January is also named after the Romans, but it's named after the god Janus. That was the gods of beginnings and endings. They say that the god Janus had two faces, one that looked back and one that looked forward. So that's why they named the first month of the year after this god, because looking, you're looking back on the old year and forward to the new year. February is named after Fabrua. That's not, that's not a famous god in the Ro Roman Empire, but Fabrua were festivals held by the Romans. So again, another Roman word that was borrowed and created on our calendar. Oops, sorry there, I made, made it a little bigger. Now, March is also named after the Roman god of war. May is named after Maesta, goddess of honor. June is named after Juno, the queen of the gods. And if you take all those word, those months out, guess how many of the months are not named after Romans? Only about five. So again, we had a lot of Roman influence on our calendar. Speaking of calendars, we borrowed the calendar. Like I said, we created, we, look at, we looked at the Romans and loved the way they kept up with everything. So we created our own calendar. Now this is my school calendar. I want you to see on the school calendar for this year that we borrowed this idea from the Romans. Each month is named October, November, December, and January. That's all I have right here from our school calendar. Underneath each name of the month, there are uh, abbreviations for the days of the week. We always start our week with Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So when we're looking at a calendar, we want to know what day of the week a certain day of the month is on. For example, let's do Mr. Brad's birthday. He's my husband. His birthday is on October the 25th. So I look down here for 25 under October and I slide my finger up and his birthday is going to be on Saturday. And it is. It's this Saturday. All right. The next thing, if I want to look for, maybe I said, what day is November 11th on? Well, I would look at November. I would look at 11. I would slide up and say, okay, November 11th is going to be on a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, ding, 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 that would be a Tuesday. Oh, I see some yellow places on that calendar. Do you guys see those yellow spots? Those yellow spots are holidays. That means days off from school. Woohoo! All right, if you want to take a look and figure out when do we get out, well, look, there are no yellow spots in October. Not one at all. But November has one in the first one. We start at a calendar just like we count numbers. We start at one. We go across week by week. <gasps> There's the first one. November 24th is going to be our Thanksgiving break. And what day does that Thanksgiving break begin on? A slide up. It is a Monday. And when do we have to go back to school? When is our last day off? How many days do we get? One, two, three, four. There are five yellow days there. The last one is the 28th, and that is a Friday. Guys, you get an entire week off from school in November if you have all that progress and attendance called up and those study Allen pathways. You will get a school week off. That sounds wonderful, doesn't it? If I wanted to know, again, let's think about it. And I, you know what? We've had Thanksgiving break. It was fun. Now we're into December. We're back in December. We're going to look and see when. Oh, we have some more yellow days. That's our winter break. If we look over here, it says winter break. What day will that winter break begin on? The first yellow day I see is on the 22nd. So I'm going to slide up. That will be on Monday. What is the slash right here on the 19th of December? Well, you know what? There's a 19 over here. What does that say? 
end of the second nine weeks. That's right. That's when your next set of work samples is due. The last week of the quarter, and that is when you're, you will get a report card after that one. So make sure all that progress is done, study Allen Pathways, all that good stuff. Now, that is the way you read a calendar. You look for the date, and then you look up. Now, one more thing I want to show you. October, look, it ends at 31. But look at November. November has 30 days. December has 31. And January has 31. Most of our days, all of our days on our calendar except for one special month, all of our months on our calendar except for one that's special, have either 30 or 31 days. The one month that doesn't have 30 or 31 is February. And it has 28 typically except in a leap year. And then it adds a few more days. But you'll learn more about that later. So take a look at that. And we are going to do an activity when you come to class based on this calendar. So make sure you watch this flip. Make sure you study this and we learn what we're doing because we are going to go into breakout rooms. Here's our activity. I've already gotten it ready for you. You're going to go in with a partner. You're going to raise your hand if you need help. Just like always, you're going to use that typing tool to type your answers. And I have three questions right down here that I'm going to have you work with a partner. Look at the calendar. This is just December and January. But I want you to take a look at that calendar and answer those questions when you come to class. Can't wait to see you. Let's practice these skills. Get smart, smart, smart in second grade. And I will see you Tuesday, doodlebugs. Love you guys.